Okay, thank you, Nick. Um, I'm trying the mobile microphone here, so. Oh, that's not going to work. There we go. Everybody can hear me okay? So, um, geez. <laughs> I'll just stand back here. So, uh, again, my name's Kevin Epps um, out of Omaha, Nebraska, uh, with a company called Crop Metrics. Um, Crop Metrics, uh, actually out of North Bend, Nebraska. It's a uh, precision ag company uh, focusing primarily on uh, center pivot uh, mechanized irrigation. Um, really what I'm going to talk about today, uh, going a little bit beyond even the scope of variable rate irrigation, um, is something I term uh, precision ag for pivots. Um, so uh, crop metrics, we are in partnership with Valley Irrigation. Um, they're a partner to us. Um, on the control side, uh, they've released some new technology I'll mention briefly in this presentation, um, and we uh, fall more on the data side. So uh, a couple things to note here. Uh, we're going into our third year of some of these services that I will describe. Um, as of 2011, we were uh, honored with the AE50 award uh, for uh, top 50 technologies in agriculture. And recently, we just won the Irrigation Association's new product contest uh, for agriculture. Um, this is a fairly prestigious award in our industry, um, identifying some of the top technology um, in irrigation. So, uh, so kind of jumping right into this, um, when you talk about precision water management um, on a very broad level, uh, we tend to break it into really two components or two parts. Uh, the first is what you already do today, irrigation scheduling, um, which we refer to as kind of a, a temporal application of water, and that is uh, how much do I apply, when do I need to apply it. Uh, technologies like soil moisture probes um, uh, are designed to uh, help you in making those assessments, um, and there's some good technology out there for that. Where we come in is really after the pivot or the sprinkler um, begins its irrigation, and that is variable rate irrigation. Vari variable rate irrigation addresses uh, more the spatial aspect of water management, and that is how much do I apply where. Um, really what we're talking about here is um, the application of technology to address variability. Um, and uh, I'll kind of show you in here a little bit uh, uh, where, we're, uh, where we're heading with this. So, so irrigation scheduling, uh, moving into variable rate irrigation, which today is the present opportunity and what I'll be speaking about. Um, as far as variable rate irrigation, we then further break that down into really two types of variable rate irrigation. The first is what we refer to as a VRI speed control. Um, this is something some of you may be doing already on a, on a, on a limited scale, but this is the idea of breaking that field into pie-shaped sectors. Um, doesn't require any additional nozzling, you're not changing flows and pressures, uh, you're simply speeding up and slowing down the pivot or the sprinkler at different points in the field uh, to uh, uh, adjust the application depth of the water. Uh, the second, slightly more advanced technology is what we call VRI zone control, um, and this is um, further dividing the, the, the uh, sprinkler into uh, segments or spans, banking the individual sprinklers so that we can control not only the speed of the machine, but the cycle time of the application uh, of, the, uh, of the center pivots. So, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about both of these and kind of where crop metrics and some of our new technology comes in uh, to really uh, uh, assist in uh, the management of uh, the variable rate water. So, so crop metrics, currently we offer a program called a VRI optimization. Um, and basically, what we do, um, we're not in the agronomy business. We don't make recommendations on how you should water, how much you should water. Um, we process data and we develop software. Um, and that software can then be used as a tool for local area agronomists that want to uh, enhance current agronomic programs through more precise management of water. And I'll show you here in a little bit how we approach that. So, so we offer a service. And I'll kind of go through a number of these, kind of what's provided um, with that service. Um, there's a number of pieces to what we do that have to kind of fit together uh, to make this work. Um, but kind of the, uh, the bread and butter is what we call our virtual agronomist program. Um, it's a, what's called a GIS software program. 
Uh, GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems, um, but it's using, um, as I'll show you here momentarily, um, uh, GIS data to make determinations about where variability is present in the field and then how to address that with improved application control. So, so kind of step one, um, and this is pretty basic uh, to getting started with our program, um, and that is we need to create what's called an EC, electrical conductivity, or an EM, electromagnetic soil map of a field. Um, what this really tells us is where we have variability within a field with respect to soil texture. Where are the tighter soils in the field? Um, um, the finer soils, the ones that may have a higher water holding capacity. Likewise, where are the coarser soils, um, the lighter, looser soils that may have lower water holding capacity? Where is that present in the field? And uh, how can we, uh, how can we uh, uh, account for that? So what, the, what you're looking at here, uh, this is, uh, this is a what's called a basically a deep EM map. So this is this is a 128 acre circle. This is looking top down three feet into the soil profile. Uh, the way the color scheme works here is the red areas here moving to the orange to the yellow uh, would be um, what we call a low EM values. So um, the sensors the sensor technology we have to bring out to the field. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, basically is detecting in this area three feet down using electrical conductivity through uh, EMF electromagnetic fields uh, that these areas of the field um, have a much coarser soil, a lower conductivity. Now we're not going to say this is a sand, that's something you, you will probably already be aware of, um, but uh, we're just simply saying this is a lower, uh, a lower value on our scale. As you move to the green, to the light blue, to the dark blue, uh, the dark blue areas here represent high EC or high EM values. Those are going to be um, your tighter soils. Um, so uh, as an example in this field, this may represent a sand, this may represent a clay, this may represent um, that texture in between. Um, we're not in the position to say that's exactly what that is. Um, nor at this point do we really, uh, are we really concerned with that. We're more concerned with a degree of variance in this field. So how much different is this soil from this soil? Where is it present? Um, and to what degree? Um, so, um, so continuing on, um, before we even start talking about variable rate irrigation, one of the things we provide with this service um, is a way to help enhance irrigation scheduling through the use of uh, um, soil moisture uh, monitoring technology, such as a capacitance probe or similar. Um, what this is, um, this is kind of a unique, what we call uh, shape layer we've developed, where we can actually take um, the EMEC data, and what we do, um, we combine that actually with some topography data, and uh, we look to say where in this field would be the optimal place to position a soil moisture probe. So say, for example, you only had one soil moisture probe um, that you're going to place into this field, and you're going to use that to help determine, again, the how much when that I need to apply. Uh, a big question, especially where you have variability present, is where are you going to place that moisture probe? Um, now, uh, we don't, in precision ag, we don't want to do anything uh, randomly. We want to do it very precisely, and the way we do that is we're going to take our high resolution EM data, and the software then will automatically class uh, the different zones of EM. So we're looking from light to heavy soils, how many acres are represented in each of your soil types. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll simply identify here in the black areas here, this is an intersection of what we call your majority soil type, so the one that's most represented in acres, um, with what we call your level ground. So. Um, we want to identify, um, again, in terms of representation, the most acres, because that's where you want to be scheduling your water against your level ground. Don't want to place that probe up on a hill. You don't want it down in a hole where water's collecting. Um, so that would be these areas here. So then I could look at, say, um, a large patch like this, and I might, using the software, make a point right there. If I was going to schedule water for this field with the assistance of a soil moisture probe, I would run it right there. 
majority soil type level ground. And the software combined with the GIS data gives us that opportunity. So, so that again, that's just optimizing irrigation scheduling. Before we even talk about spatial optimization, this is just getting the amount of water you need to apply when you need to turn that sprinkler on being driven um, from a known soil type.